Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining my video for this introductory Algebra 1 lesson. We talk about the number properties. You're going to see some properties that you recognize from your middle school days, plus you're going to learn some brand new properties that you're definitely going to need in geometry for next year. So join me and let's see where we go with this. Our first property is called the additive identity. Additive identity, when you add something to get itself. That's what identity means. Identity means yourself or itself. So for any number a, a plus zero is equal to a. And we know that. We know that anytime we add zero to something, we get that initial result. The number doesn't change. So that's when you add, you add zero to get itself. That's the additive identity. So for example, three plus zero is just three. That's the additive identity. Next one is additive inverse. So what we add as the opposite, inverse is our opposite sign. So for any number a, if I take a and I add it by its opposite sign, negative a, I get zero. That is the additive inverse. When you add the opposite sign, the result is always zero. So my example would be three plus a negative three is just zero. So additive identity, it's what you add to stay the same. Additive inverse is when you add the opposite sign to get zero. Multiplicative identity. We know that the way to get itself, a number to multiply to get itself, remember identity means yourself, is to multiply by one. So a times one is just a. Any number multiplied by itself, so three times one is just itself three. Multiplication property of zero. We know any time we multiply something by zero, if you have zero of something, zero times five, zero times four, six times zero, the result is always zero. That's our multiplication property of zero. When we multiply by zero, so three times zero, we just get zero as our result. Let's take a look at some more now. Multiplicative inverse property. So if I scroll back up, additive inverse is when you add the opposite sign. Multiplicative inverse is not multiplying by the opposite sign, it's actually multiplying by the reciprocal. Something special happens when you multiply any value by its reciprocal. So here my definition says for every number a over b, where a and b, well, where a and then b does not equal zero, you can't have a zero in the denominator, there's exactly one number, b over a, so it's the reciprocal, such that a over b times b over a do you know what's going to happen here? Think about it. The A's would simplify out. They would cross simplify. B's would simplify out. We would just be left with 1. The multiplicative inverse is when you take any value and you multiply it by its reciprocal. The result is always 1. Also think about it. If you did A times B, A times B is AB. B times A is AB. AB over AB is just 1. So here's my example for you. 2 thirds times 3 over 2 is one, because think about it. Two times three is six. Three times two is six. Six over six is one. Even if I gave you three, three over one times one third is just one. Any number multiplied by its reciprocal gets you one. That's the multiplicative inverse property. Now, the next four are new for Algebra 1 students, but they're definitely used a lot, and I teach geometry, they're definitely used a lot in geometry. So I made a little note on the side of my screen that says geo. First property, reflexive property. Reflexive property is you like seeing your reflection in a mirror. For any number a, a is equal to a. That's the reflexive property. It seems a little silly now, but trust me, you're gonna need it in geometry. Okay, reflexive property is that any number is just equal to itself. So three equals three. Again, I know it looks silly right now, but just trust me. The symmetric property. The symmetric property is if A is equal to B, then I can make the opposite statement. B is equal to A. Now, a lot of you in Algebra 1, you've used this property for years now. You just never realized it. When you were solving those basic equations back in the last few years, if you ended up getting an answer that looked like 3 equals x, you are most likely told by your teacher to reverse the order. Instead of your final answer saying 3 equals x, your teacher told you to put the variable first. So you would say x is equal to 3. Well, that's the symmetric property. So you were, you were using that property and you didn't even know it yet. Okay, 
So if I said a was equal to 3, that's the same thing. 3 is equal to a and vice versa. Transitive property. This is my favorite property if I had to pick. Transitive property. If a is equal to b and b, I'm going to grab a pen here, my little virtual pen, and b is equal to c, okay? So if a is equal to b and b is equal to c, then we could say that the original a, if a is equal to b, and I'm telling you b is also equal to c, then a is actually equal to c, the transitive property. So when you have values that are going in order, if a is equal to b and b is equal to c, then a is equal to c. It's like you're skipping over that b. You're kind of jumping right over it because you don't need it. Okay, so my example for this would be, if a is equal to 3, and then I tell you 3 is equal to c, since they're both equal to 3, that would mean that a is equal to c. Substitution property. Substitution property is the property we use whenever we have to simplify or um, evaluate an expression, and it doesn't fall in line with any of the other properties. So, for example, if I gave you this, you know, 2 plus 3 is equal to c, well, 2 plus 3 isn't any identity property. It's not an inverse property. I'm not multiplying by 0. I'm just simply replacing 2 plus 3 with 5. 5 is equal to C. Going from 2 plus 3 to a 5 is just simply substitution. I'm replacing what I know 2 plus 3 is equal with with 5. I'm not multiplying by 1 or 0. I'm not adding 0. I'm not adding any inverses. It doesn't fit in line with anything that I just spoke about before. Last two here you've known for a while. Commutative property, order changes. And commutative property is under addition and multiplication only. Doesn't work with subtraction or division. I would be able to say a plus b is equal to b plus a. You can add or you can multiply. b a times b is equal to b times a. Addition, um, addition and multiplication are commutative. Order doesn't matter. Commutative property, think about when you commute to school and you commute home. The distance doesn't change, it's just the order you went in changed. Associative property. Associative property also works with addition and multiplication. Associative property deals with grouping. So you generally are going to use your parentheses for your grouping symbols. doesn't matter what you group in addition, the result would be the same. So actually, let me go back to my commutative property here. Here's my example. 2 plus 3 is equal to 3 plus 2. 2 times 3 is equal to 3 times 2. Order wouldn't matter. But my associative property, if I was adding up A, B, and C, and I grouped together A and B, and I added that first, and then C, I would get the exact same result if I had added B and C first, and then added A. Okay? Doing 1 plus 2 plus 3 is the same as doing 1 plus 2 plus 3. I would get 3 here, plus 3 is 6, or I'd get 5 plus 1 is also 6. It works for multiplication as well. doesn't matter what order you multiply in, your result will be the same. So these are all of our properties, and what we're going to do next is we're going to simplify an expression, we're going to use our order of operations, and we're going to justify each step with which one of these number properties we actually just used. Okay. Okay, here's our problem. 4 times, open bracket, 5 minus, in parentheses, 15 divided by 3, close parentheses, close bracket, plus 2. So here's our original problem. If I was following my order of operations, the very first thing I would do is I would simplify this 15 divided by 3. Remember, you work from the innermost parentheses and work your way out. So 15 divided by 3 gets replaced with a 5. So notice I bring everything else down and I just replace this. The property that lets me say that 15 divided by 3 is 5 is substitution. I'm replacing 15 divided by 3 with 5. It's not an identity. It's not multiplying by 0. It's not any inverses. Now, next step, I'd have to simplify what's in my grouping symbols. 5 minus 5 is 0. Now, this is one of our special properties. Which property let us take a positive and a negative? So a positive 5 and a negative 5. And when we add them together, we get 0. A positive and a negative. It's the additive inverse. When you add two opposite signs, so a positive 5 and a negative 5, those are technically adding. You're really doing a positive 5 plus a negative 5 there. And you get 0 as your result. Next step, 4 times 0. If I do 4 times 0, I get 0. There was a special property for this. 
It's the multiplication property of zero. Or you can also call it zero product, the product of zero. Now, zero plus two. Anytime you add zero to a number, you get the same result. That's also a property. Adding zero to something is the additive identity. When you add zero, you get itself. Next one. First step, simplify what's in my parentheses. So two times two, that becomes my four. Making two times two become four is not an inverse. It's not an identity. That's just simply substitution. Now, simplifying what's in my parentheses here, negative four plus four. We saw this in the previous problem. When you combine a positive and a negative and you get zero as the result it's in the previous problem, I hope you can see it. That's because of the additive inverse property. When you add opposite signs, the result is zero. My next step, multiplication. So two times zero is zero. That's again my multiplication property of zero. Now addition and subtraction in order from left to right. So six plus zero is six. We know that if we add zero and we get the same result, that's our additive identity. And now six minus six. So a positive six and a negative six added together, getting zero. That's again my additive inverse. So additive inverse actually showed up twice in that problem. Okay, let's take a look at another one. First step I would do here is within my parentheses, I have to do my division. So six divided by three gives me two. Six divided by three is two, that's just substitution. Then I'm gonna simplify what's in my parentheses. Two minus one is one. There's no special property about subtracting one. That's still substitution. Now, two times one. We know that's a special property. Anytime you multiply something by one, you get itself. Okay, multiplying to get itself, that's the multiplicative identity. Now, last step, two times one half. Half of two is just one. Now think about what's really happening there. Two multiplied by one half. One half is the reciprocal of two. So when I multiply by the reciprocal, that's the multiplicative inverse. Anytime you take a value and you multiply it by its reciprocal, you get one. That's my multiplicative inverse. Next one. First step in simplifying within these parentheses is I need to take care of my exponents. So my three squared is nine. Making three squared and turning it nine is simply just substitution, okay? Um, now I need to finish what's in my parentheses. Nine minus nine is zero, okay? A positive plus that negative, that's additive inverse. Six times zero, multiplication property of zero. 2 plus 0 is 2. That's my additive identity. And then 2 minus 2, getting 0. That's my additive inverse. Now, if I'm going too fast, of course, feel, feel free to pause, play back, and so on. Okay, last problem. If you want to try this problem before I go through all the steps, go for it. Pause, of course, or just continue on with me. So first step, within my parentheses, I have to do my division first. Remember, division comes before subtraction. 39 divided by 3 is 13. That's just substitution. 14 minus 13 is 1. That's, again, just substitution. Now, 5 times 1. We multiply by 1 to get itself. That is the multiplicative identity. 4 times 1 fourth. When you multiply 4 by its reciprocal, you get 1. That's the multiplicative inverse. And last step, 5 plus 1 is six, and that is just simply substitution. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much, and check out my other videos.